ever had the feeling that you don't really know what you're doing? That you're just kind of jumping from task to task, maybe person to person, event from event, but it all feels chaotic? Ever had that frustrated feeling when you don't know what you're doing and you want to feel like you know what you're doing? And you don't desperately want to do something about it, but a little deeper down, you do, and you're tired of feeling this way. Maybe it feels like everyone else has their shit together and you don't, or in a more simple term that can probably be more relatable. It feels like something's missing from your life. If you have this feeling that something is missing from your life, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that around 95% of people, which I totally made up that statistic, feel the same way too, that something is missing from their life. And the good news is, is there also, there's also three things that I have found that can do away with this feeling. The bad news is, is that these are gonna require work. These three things are major and this transformation won't happen overnight. But if you're anything like myself, you're okay working towards something if it means the end result is grand. So that brings me to my first cure, work. The word work has many definitions. The first definition being activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. But this word has a negative connotation. Oh, I have to work today. I cannot work today. I can't believe I have to go to work today. Work sucks. I'm so tired of work. But work does not have to be a negative thing. I myself actually used to be anti-work, which means that I didn't think that we should work all the time, that everyone should have a job, that we should all be trying to work less so we can experience life more and be happier without work. I've had interest in working food and retail since I was 14, but I've never had a real job before. I used to see working as being a slave to the system. And I do still agree with some of those things, like I don't think we should all work to survive. Work is not a negative thing. And I'm gonna to try to speak from a place of non-privilege when I say this, but I think some of the jobs that people work are unacceptable. I think it is unacceptable that we have to work jobs that don't mean shit to us for a company that doesn't mean shit to us if that's not what we want to do. Now I understand that some people don't have a choice. I understand that some teenagers have to work to help their parents pay bills and that's okay. But the work I'm talking about that will cure you from this bewilderment is not just a normal job. It's not a typical career either. However, if you truly deep down did want to be a doctor, a rocket scientist, a geologist, whatever, then this work would be your saving. If people love their job, that's okay. But the truth is most people don't love their job. And I don't think that's acceptable. Not if you have something to say about it. So the work that will cure you from this bewilderment feeling is work that you're passionate about, that you love. The quote, if you do something you love every day, you'll never work a day in your life. That's the kind of work I'm talking about. So if you have a career or you plan on having a career that will literally, you'll be happy to wake up in the morning and this thing means so much to you, that's amazing. The issue is when we don't have something like that. I think everyone should be doing work that is not work. That's a passion that they love. Some examples of this, writing, making music, making silly YouTube videos, something that brings you passion and purpose in a way. This YouTube channel isn't work for me. It's really not. I love doing this. This brings me so much purpose and happiness. But the other day, I was really messed up. I was frustrated. I was lost. I was bewildered. I have so much, and yet I still felt confused. I wrote this exactly in my journal. I feel like I'm walking alone. I feel like there's no one guiding me or holding my hand. I don't want to walk alone. And it just hit me. And the power of journaling, by the way, I need to double down on this. My work with this channel has always been kind of unorganized. I used to upload a video every other day because it was new to me. It was novel and it was fun and I could easily make a video every day and upload it the next day. Then I decided I need some more time to make these videos. So I went to five days, once one video every five days. And then that has now dropped to one video a week, which is what I've been doing the last two months or so. Now this works for me, but being a natural procrastinator my whole life, I found I was waiting till the fourth, fifth day of the week to upload a video, and that video was kind of rushed. It wasn't my best work because I felt like I had a deadline I had to work towards. This work here is important to me. I like to believe that I'm actually helping people and that some people are watching and can feel inspired or that I can maybe guide someone somewhere. So I know that I need space to breathe, space to think, space to actually create. I can't procrastinate anymore. And I had the realization that to cure my puzzled, confused feeling, I needed to work on this, my passion project, the thing I love every single day. And it feels good. I feel great. I'm happy with what I'm creating and I'm making money, which proves to myself and my parents that this is not just a little joke. And I think if I just lock in and spend 90 minutes in deep work session, that feeling of bewilderment stays at bay for a while. And it does. 
just knowing that I'm doing something I love every day and it's actually having results and helping people makes me feel not lost. This is what a passion project will do for you. So what if you need to work? I have read posts on the internet for years now and had conversations in real life with people about this topic. Especially Gen Z, we don't want to live that nine to five life. We don't want to commute for an hour, being losing an hour of our life in traffic, working at a job that we don't like for a company that doesn't represent us, just to come home and have no energy to do anything, not even wanting to date or go out because you don't have the energy for it. Your weekend's just being a little recharge session from the week work week before. We don't want to live that nine to five life. And if you do, that's okay. I'm just saying I've met a lot of people who have told me this before. The worst thing is that people say that their life feels like a cycle. Every day repeats, nothing's new. It's monotonous, Prem, if you're watching this. People don't want this life, so you need a passion project because the opposite of monotony is working on something you love every day. There's always something new and it brings you this sense of, yeah, days are passing, but you're making every day count. Maybe you'll be skilled enough at your passion project that you can make money from it and you won't have to work your nine to five. Then the world is really in your hands and that's a really exciting feeling. Take it from me. I've been a teenager almost five years now and I think in adolescence, we all wanna dip our toes in the water of the world to see what the hell we wanna do with our lives. And that question has always bugged me. And I've noticed in the years that I've been trying to figure out what I wanna do with my life, not doing anything has always made me feel the worst. The periods of my life when I wasn't working on something that mattered to me, even before this channel, when I was making music, I wasn't working on the music. I felt bewildered, I felt lost. I felt like I didn't know what I was doing here. It's always been when I'm working on something that means something to me that I don't feel bewildered. I guess I've always been someone that's naturally wanted to do something special with his life. And I think everyone wants to do something special with their life. It's just if you haven't been doing that thing that you love or have wanted to start, you kind of forget that you actually did at a point want to do something different or special or unique to you that brought you a sense of peace. Maybe you've written it off because of age, circumstance, whatever. So if this is you, that thing that you love or if you don't know what you love, find that thing you love. Spend some time on it every day and watch how your world changes, how the path of life gets paved for you, how you don't really feel as lost as you were some time ago. And now you're no longer walking alone. I don't feel like I'm walking alone anymore. I'm walking alongside my intuition, which is telling me that this is what's right for me. I was journaling the other day with the intention that I wanted to set my priorities of life straight. So I organized this list into six things, the top being this business. And I wrote alongside that, if business isn't moving or I'm not working on this, I don't feel totally content. So I have to be doing this to feel like I'm doing something, to like get past that feeling of bewilderment. Now I'm not tied to this. It just needs to be something that means something to me. That's what I mean when I say business, it means something to me. Second, however, I wrote relationships. And alongside that, I wrote, business means nothing without relationships. I've said it before that I could be a millionaire, billionaire, but if I don't have friends, what's the point? Or if I don't have someone that I can turn to that I love, even a dog, what's the point? Relationships are everything in this world, everything. Your success means nothing without love. There are depressed billionaires. If that's not an example of this phenomenon, I don't know what is. So the second cure of this bewildered feeling is a little cliche, but it's, it's love, man. <laughs> I don't know why, but I would bet everything I own on this statement. If you made love a priority in your life, you would not feel bewildered or lost. If love is a priority in your life, I don't think it's possible to feel lost. Because when you have that loving relationship with someone, everything seems kind of okay. For those of us who are or have been fortunate enough to be in a loving relationship with someone who actually loves you back, you know that there's a feeling that you get when you're with that person and it's just you two. Maybe you're cuddling or maybe you're just spending very intimate time together. You know that that feeling of the world could be ending right now, but as long as I'm here with you, everything feels okay. As long as you're holding each other in each other's arms, everything feels okay. Take the song Pigs on the Wing 2 by Pink Floyd. You know that I care what happens to you, and I know that you care for me too. So I don't feel alone or the weight of the stone. Any fool knows a dog needs a home, a shelter from pigs on the wing. For those who don't know the lore behind this album, first of all, you should check it out because it's amazing. But basically it goes like this. So society is shit and the world is kind of shit. Random 20 minute guitar solo and you've got yourself one of the best albums of all time in my opinion. But despite an album about being how society and the world is really cutthroat and kind of unloving, filled with apathy, Roger Waters ends this album with a love song. 
one of the only few love songs in Pink Floyd's entire discography. And Roger proclaims to his lover that because he knows that she loves him, and because he knows that she knows that he loves him, her, he's okay. He doesn't feel alone. That weight of the world is no longer on him because he doesn't feel alone. And he refers to himself as a dog. And in the album, the dogs are the, the mean, fucked up, cutthroat ones. So even though he's a dog, by being not alone, he feels okay. He doesn't feel that bewildered feeling. It's also nice to know that that same emotion you feel right now, bewildered, lost, whatever it is, not only has been felt by millions of people, and even the most famous people ever have felt this feeling before, but that love is kind of a cure for it. He continues with, a dog needs a home, a shelter from pigs on the wing. Love is the shelter. Love is your home. Love is that thing that will protect you from the shitty parts of the world. That the world could be ending, but as long as it's you and your lover there, or someone you love, family, friends, you don't feel the weight of the stone. You don't feel that pulling down on you, that barbell on your back of confusion and bewilderment. Find your shelter from the pigs on the wing by creating relationships, building relationships, creating connections. Again, relationships are everything. You could be the most successful man or woman on the planet, but if you do not have relationships, What's the point? And don't think, I'm just gonna build my business now and then I'll be rich and then I'll work on being on creating relationships. But no, you can't do it like that. It needs to be at least alongside it because why have a business that's, you know, getting somewhere but still with no one to tell it to? Everyone needs a shelter. Love can be a shelter. My previous video before the video that was released last week was about how we should be less self-centered more focused on the needs of others, getting rid of that drama in our head, that life story that we all have of who we are, where we came from, where we're going, and what we wanna do. So in your day-to-day -day life, try to let go of this drama. Instead of thinking about the way people have wronged you or how you're gonna wrong that person who wronged you, just being more concerned with how other people that you truly care about and love are doing. When was the last time you called your grandmother or asked your dad how his workout was or called a friend even? Have you been working on building the relationships in your life? So it's no wonder you might feel lost. You don't even know that people care about you and the people that you care about don't even know that you care about them. Of course, this isn't always easy. It's pretty common that you're gonna tell someone that you care about them and they're kind of not gonna reciprocate that feeling. It's pretty common to love someone for them to not love you back, unfortunately. But you gotta roll with the punches and realize that the benefits and reward of having good, healthy relationships is worth that unfortunate pain of not getting that relationship you want or having friends that aren't as caring for you as they should be. There's two sides of the coin. You cannot have the good without the bad. So double down on the relationships that are valuable to you. That one friend who always answers that mo you, your mom probably will answer your call if you want to talk to her. Double down on building up those relationships before you start creating new ones or looking for new ones. I think we've been taught that we need 15 friends. No, you need two or three, one. Just people that you can turn to and you could cry in front of if you had to and you will not feel alone you will not feel lost and if their happiness means as much to you as your own happiness you're not going to feel lost there's always something we can learn about people you might think you know someone you do not 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 a hundred percent you could be married to someone for 50 years and still be learning something new about them every single day this being grateful for the friends that we already do have and the family we already do have and trying to build up those relationships leads me to the final cure gratitude some time ago i was driving in the car with my friend and i was telling him about how i need to be grateful I don't have to be happy, but I must be grateful because I have so much around me that I take for granted every single day. Mr. Beast just made a video about how he built like a hundred wells in Africa. And I watched the video. Some of these people have to walk two miles on a mountain to get unclean water. I can walk 10 feet from my bed to my refrigerator and get clean water. Gratitude leads to contentment. And contentment is very important because you're not gonna be lost. When you're content, yeah, I have these things and I don't need to do anything else. There's no more searching for me. Now I'm not saying settle, but I'm saying contentment is a very nice, peaceful feeling to have. And that can come through being grateful. Furthermore, some people have to go to sleep cold and hungry every night. Some people don't have electricity. Some people don't have anything. And I do, some people have divorced parents. 
I don't. Some people have no friends. Some people don't have a bike. Some people don't have a phone. So many things that I see is the bare minimum because I've grown up with these things my whole life that I've never sat down and been like, thank God I can actually see. Or thank God that I can actually walk, that I still have two legs, two arms. And then it's impossible to not feel content. When you remind yourself what you actually have, being able to breathe, it's impossible to not feel content. I realize that I live a very nice life compared to so much of the world. And there is a real possibility that my whole life could just be downhill from here. Of course, I don't want that, but it's a possibility. I can't see the future. So if I'm not content and grateful right now, sorry, if I'm not grateful right now, I might lose all these things and my life might never be as good as it is right now. And then what? So get a journal out right now and write something that you're grateful for. Even the thing that it seems like the most bare minimum, like food. And write that you're grateful for it. And it's and you might feel guilty for never being like, yeah, I'm actually grateful that I have food to eat. But don't feel upset about yourself. It's normal. But it is imperative that you remind yourself that you are thankful for all you have. I plan to upload this video probably on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving isn't just a holiday about eating nice food, but it's about being thankful. So be thankful today. Show love today. Be grateful today. Work on your passion and show love to your family that you are thankful for them. Tell someone that you're thankful for them. And you won't feel alone and you won't feel the weight of the stone. I need to stop quoting that Roger Wood. <laughs> you won't feel lost anymore when you do those three things and you work towards those three things, which again, more passion, love, and gratefulness. If you want to get closer to me join the channel memberships coaching call link is also in the description and to my subscribers who comment and like my videos and support me thank you it really means so much to me and i hope you all have a beautiful rest of your day bye bye